Have you ever wanted to learn how to wire a 50 watt bass shaker to your simulator, increasing the immersion by approximately 172 times, whilst annoying absolutely everybody that lives with you? Hmm. Let's get into it. So before we embark on this spectacular journey, we're going to need a small shopping list. I will leave links to everything in the description, and please note, some will be affiliate links so I may get a small percentage that goes back into helping run the channel. Firstly, you are going to need your chosen 50 watt bass shaker, or whatever wattage of bass shaker you've chosen, or to give it its proper name, Tactile Transducer. I've chosen to use these ones by PUI, and for the most part, they perform pretty well. However, I will note I have had to have a couple of these replaced under warranty because they had a fault. Now there are a couple of other options um, which can be used, which can be easily googled on the internet. Secondly, you are going to need a powered USB amplifier that is able to deliver 50 watts of power to this bass shaker. For this, I have chosen this little bad boy, the hilariously named Knobsound NS01G. It is a mains powered and also connects via USB, which is what you need and will deliver 50 watts per channel. Please note that if your bass shaker is below this wattage, you will need to be careful not to turn it up or you will risk blowing the shaker. This single amp will power two times 50 watt bass shakers. Next you will need some 0.5mm speaker cable. This can be found cheaply and cheerfully on Amazon. Again, all links down below. Now these next things aren't essential, but you are going to need something to strip the wire. Um, to make life particularly easy, you can use a set of wire strippers, which I recommend and you can be cheaply picked up on Amazon, or if you're feeling particularly adept, a set of pliers. Now I think these are really useful. Now these are some RCA adapters, both female and male, and these are going to allow you to easily and succinctly disconnect your bass shakers at any point if you need access to your rig, without having to separately rewire them all over again. If you're choosing to use the RCA adapters, you're going to need a cute little small Phillips screwdriver in order to secure the speaker cables to them. Before we start, we're going to need to download the software that allows us to operate the bass shakers, and this is something called SimHub. I'll leave a link in the description below, but if you type SimHub dash into Google and then head to www.simhub dash.com, it'll bring you to the SimHub homepage. Um, now there's a couple of options here. Now I highly recommend buying a license for this. Um, for demonstration purposes on my tablet, I haven't got the license on that, but I've paid for it for my Simrig. It's well worth it because it gives you a little extra frames per second when it's delivering the data to your base shakers. I highly recommend it. I'm not affiliated. It helps support the developers and they've put a lot of work into this and I've got hours and hours of enjoyment out of all the work they've put in. Um, if you choose to do that, um, click ahead, give a donation, and they'll send you a link, I believe. Um, but if not, go to download and start downloading the software. Once it's downloaded, install it, and then you're ready to proceed to the next part of this tutorial. Now for just a little bit of half-time self-promotion. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please consider hitting that like button and also subscribing to join Trauma Team Racing. First of all, you're going to want to measure out the total distance of speaker cable you need to reach from your base shaker, which is going to be mounted to your rig in some fashion, and then it will need to reach all the way to the amplifier, which is going to be near your computer. This has been cut shorter here for demonstration purposes. To make things easier for connection, you're going to want to split the two wires apart. This can be done gently using your hands. Insert the ends of the wires into the wire stripper and simply engage. Do this for all ends of the wire. Nice. Now you're going to want to gently twist the speaker cable in a clockwise direction and this is going to give a good connection point to the RCA connectors. Now you've got to be careful here because the wire can fray and it can become quite sharp if you're not careful. You're then going to want to repeat this process for the other end of the speaker cable. You're then going to need to make a decision as to where you want your RCA adapter connection point to be for easy disconnection from your sim rig. Now you can either have this near the computer or have it near the simulator. For me, I felt it was easier to have it more connected near the simulator. Choose your point and clip it with the wire cutters. At this point, you're going to need to prepare the two new ends of the wire again. Again, use your wire cutters to strip the wires, twist the ends and prepare them for connection to the RCA adapter. Take time with your preparation here because it makes things much easier later on when it comes to connecting everything up. To connect a single bass shaker, you should now be left with two separate pieces of speaker cable 
with a total of eight fashioned ends ready for connection. Important to note for this setup, red is positive and black is negative. You will notice on the RCA adapter, there is a clear symbol for the positive wire and the negative wire. It is important to be consistent throughout the setup when connecting the wires and the base shakers up. To connect these, simply loosen off the Phillips screws, which are placed inside the RCA adapter, insert the wires, and then using your Phillips screwdriver, tighten them down. Repeat this for just two ends of the speaker cable. Now, important to note here, which is a mistake I've made. Now, this is purely for demonstration, but you don't really want wire showing with your connection. So try and get it nice and flush and trim the wire if you need to. Groovy. Now you're ready to wire one end of the speaker cable into your amplifier. Pick either the right or the left channel and connect the red to the positive, because that's what we've chosen, and connect the black to the negative, which is, again, what we've chosen. Now when you're inserting the wire into the connector, you want to make sure it's just the metal in contact with the metal and don't bite down on the plastic to make sure you've got a nice connection between the speaker cable and your amplifier. Once that's all secure, you're in like Flynn. The final connection is the remaining end of the speaker cable, which needs to be wired directly into the 50 watt tactile transducer. Take the red end of the cable and connect it to the red terminal, and take the black end of the cable and connect it to the black terminal. Again, remember to be consistent throughout your circuit. All things done correctly, you'll now have a really slick setup with a nice RCA adapter for quick disconnection, ready to be wired straight into your computer for all that 50 watt tactile transducer glory. Important to note here for demonstration purposes, we're going to be using the trial version of SimHub on my tablet. Um, I have paid for the full version on my SimRig and it is well worth it. You get a little bit of a faster response with some faster frames per second with regards to feedback from everything you've got connected and it also goes to supporting the developers who have done an absolutely fantastic job with this. First of all, you're going to want to connect the mains cable, but don't turn it on just yet. There is an on-off switch located at the back of the amplifier. First, you're then going to want to take your USB cable, connect it into the back of the amplifier, plug it into your computer, and then it should be recognized by SimHub. At this point, you can turn on the amplifier. Now you want to alter your input gain. Now if you've got a 50 watt bass shaker, you can use the full power of this 50 watt per channel amplifier. However, remember, if you have a 25 watt bass shaker, you're gonna to need to turn that down to 50% or the amplifier will blow your shaker. In this context, blowing the shaker is a bad thing. Now we're ready to head back into SimHub. So once you open the application, head to the little dash on the left hand side and click Shake It Base Shakers. Now what this is going to do, it's going to give you some output selection and it should be named something like Speakers USB 2.0 Device. Click that, hit Enable Output and then you're ready to rock and roll. Now there's a lot of options here. Now for me, I like to use the custom channel map to tune my base shakers and as I've said, I'll go through this in a later tutorial. For the sake of testing, just click that and your right shaker should be wired into channel one, and if you wired it into the left channel, that should be on channel two. Now, let's head back to the base shaker, and we're just gonna click test on channel one, and if all things are working correctly, the base shaker should fire. Now, this is the part I really like. As demonstrated in SibHub, when you're ready, click test, and the base shaker should fire. And that is mission complete. Now, in order to tune these, that really is its own separate thing. I'm going to go through that in a separate tutorial um, if there's demand for it. Um, what you need to decide is how many of these you want to wire to your rig um, and then configure your wiring setup to that. I myself am running a GT Amiga Titan rig um, and I've managed to mount six of these to it, which is perhaps a little bit overboard, but I love it. Um, if there's interest for that, I'm going to do a video on how to successfully mount six of these 50 watt base shakers to a GT Amiga Titan. Um, and it took a bit of figure out, but I'm quite happy with the result. Um, if you like this content, um, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and we're also on Twitter, 
Instagram, and there is gonna be a Discord coming, but I've been quite unwell recently, so um, I haven't kind of had a chance to get that up and running, but it is coming soon, and hopefully get some community races in the very near future. Um, as always, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for the support. Um, good night, good evening, good morning. See you guys in the next one.